1983 saw the release of Psycho 2, a sequel that had the task of living up to one of the most iconic horror movies in history. And with the film having an open ending being well received and earning almost 50 million at the box office, another sequel was very likely. And two years later in 1986, Psycho 3 was released. But how well does this sequel fare in comparison to the previous one? Greetings all you movie junkies and entertainment lovers, and welcome to another review. Today we're going to be talking about Psycho 3. Set a few months after the events of Psycho 2, Norman Bates, once again played by Anthony Perkins, is still running the Bates Motel with the corpse of Emma Spool, his supposed real mother, sitting up in the window of his house. But things get more complicated when a suicidal nun closely resembling Marion Crane arrives at the motel along with a mysterious drifter named Dwayne Duke. A reporter also starts snooping around in hopes of trying to solve the mysterious disappearance of Mrs. Spool, as Mother goes on another murder spree. This time, the film was directed by Norman Bates himself, Anthony Perkins, in his directorial debut. However, the film was not as well received as Psycho 2, nor did it do as well at the box office. But how good is it in comparison to the last film? Well, unlike Psycho 2, this film doesn't try to be as original, essentially going back to basics with Norman once again being taken over by his mother persona and killing pretty much every other woman that arrives at the base motel. And with the kills being more brutal than ever, this film feels much more like a regular slasher film than the last one did. Which is kind of ironic in a way, considering that the original Psycho was basically responsible for creating the whole subgenre to begin with. This is something that you could see as a downgrade, or just the franchise fitting in with the other horror movies of the time. And for me, it is a little bit of both. Anthony Perkins' direction here is very good overall. One of my favorite tension filled moments that is executed very well is when the sheriff gets some ice out of the ice box and the hand of one of Mother's victims is hiding inside, which is probably my personal favorite moment in the entire film, which is both tense and somewhat comedic. And I love how oblivious Sheriff Hunt is to what's really going on. I've had enough of this Nancy Drew horse shit from you. Another great moment is when Norman leaves the hospital room, shuts the door, and suddenly he's back in Mother's room. Perkins' performance here as Norman is once again great, but overall I would say that this is his weakest performance of the four films, mainly due to the overall lacking story. I did like how this time round we get to see Norman have full on conversations with Mother, as well as seeing Norman in full Mother getup at the end. So even though this film is not as original, I did appreciate how we did get some familiar elements like this expanded upon. And then you've got that really bizarre opening, which tells you right off the bat that this is going to be a really odd sequel, especially in comparison to Psycho 2, which opened with the most iconic scene from the original film, as if to say, yes, we know exactly what we're trying to live up to. In terms of the overall story this time, it feels much more of a mishmash of different ideas and not as well conceived or as cohesive as the last one. You've got an ex-nun in Maureen who tries to have a relationship with Norman after he saved her from committing suicide. Then you've got an insane drifter in Dwayne Duke who might be just as psycho as Norman is. And you've got a wannabe Jack McGee reporter trying to prove that Norman is still insane and responsible for Mrs. Spool's death. All really interesting ideas that ultimately don't really feel like they go anywhere particularly interesting or surprising. I think it would have worked a lot better had they decided to axe at least one of these characters in favor of putting more time into executing the others better. My vote honestly would have been to drop the character of Maureen. The whole aspect of her hallucinating mother as the Virgin Mary after she tries to kill herself felt pretty laughable and silly to me, and the Marion Crane resemblance that Norman picks up on is an interesting idea, but ultimately ultimately doesn't really go anywhere. The Dwayne Duke character was definitely the most interesting to me and is played really well by Jeff Fahey. And the idea of Norman essentially meaning his match in a way is a pretty neat idea. I originally thought that he was going to be Norman's half brother or something, which could have been a more interesting twist than the one we actually got. But no, he's just kind of crazy. A fun chaotic character who is definitely a standout in the film, I just wish they would have done something more interesting with him. 
The reporter aspect is another thing that could have been more interesting, but ultimately it accumulates in the actual big reveal, which basically just ends up being a retcon of the twist at the end of the last movie. A pretty weak and disappointing ending overall, which to me is easily the most disappointing part of the film. Overall, Psycho 3 is definitely an inferior sequel compared to Psycho 2, but I do appreciate that it tried to take things in new directions even if it didn't all work. Any movie that starts on a pitch black screen with someone yelling there is no god, you know you're in for a strange and twisted ride, which this film very much is. It will work for some better than others, and ultimately I think it has a lot to do with how much you personally enjoy slasher films, because in terms of being a more traditional slasher, it works very well and is arguably a lot better than many other typical slasher sequels. But in comparison to not just the original but Psycho 2, which was not a typical slasher sequel, it leaves a lot to be desired, but it has enough creative elements to where it still stands out on its own as a unique and demented take on the Psycho story. So if you enjoy your more campy, fun, sleazy, over-the-top 80 slashers like myself, then Psycho 3 is definitely worth a watch, and compared to the dreadful 1998 remake, this movie is a slasher masterpiece. Thanks for watching this review, be sure to subscribe for more videos, and until next time be sure to consume as much entertainment as humanly possible, and I will see you in the next video.